now we are on air again. And after learning about how to reduce employee turnover with e-learning, our next session with Natalie Taylor will focus on how to get buy-in and motivate employees to learn. Oh, this is such a burning issue for many of us, both the, the ones who are new in the industry and those who have been with e-learning for quite some time. By implementing the strategies and tips shared in this session, you can create a definitely a much more engaged and motivated workforce, or I would even say a much more engaged and motivated team, which is probably a better approach, which will ultimately lead to better learning outcomes and increased productivity, of course. So be sure to tune in to learn how to inspire your employees to learn and grow with your organization. Send a round of welcoming applause, the emojis or some welcoming words to our next speaker, fantastic Natalie Taylor. Natalie, do you hear us well? Yes, I can hear you well. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I wish you all the best of luck. I'm sure we are very excited, all of us, the attendees and myself, including, we're all excited to hear more about this motivation and buy-in. So please, without further ado, let's get started. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, can you tell me uh, if you see my screen, if you see the presentation? Awesome. So hello, everyone. And um, thank you for joining today's session on how to get buy-in and motivate to learn. Uh, my name is Natalie, and I'm a senior e-learning consultant at iSpring. I've helped a total of 300 companies in North America tailor e-learning to their specific needs. And I sincerely believe that training can be a game changer for companies if the approach is right. And I love my job. But aside from work, I'm a person with some strengths and weaknesses, hobbies and interests. So just a few fun facts about me. I'm keen on spending time with my family. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I'm obsessed with space, planets, and the universe. And I'm a realist and call a spade a spade. And I think I'm a cheerful person and consider myself lucky to always be surrounded by amazing people. And today I'm excited to share some tips and tricks for engaging employees and building a positive learning culture within your organization. As someone who has worked uh, closely with clients to implement e-learning solutions, I've seen firsthand how important it is to get buy-in from employees and keep them motivated throughout the learning process. Promoting a positive learning culture can have a huge impact on employee engagement, retention, and of course, productivity, and all of which are critical to the success of any company. So. During today's session, we'll discuss why buy-in is so important when it comes to employee training. We'll go over common challenges to motivating employees to learn. Then we'll take a deep dive into the best ways to engage your employees and best practices for creating a positive learning culture. We'll cover techniques uh, like personalization, gamification, social learning, and continuous learning, learning um, as well as, you know, strategies for uh, overcoming common barriers to learning and resistance to change. And I'm really excited to share my knowledge and experience uh, with all of you. And I hope that by the end of this presentation, you'll have some actionable takeaways that you can implement in your own organizations. So let's get started. First things first, uh, what do we mean when we talk about buy-in in the context of employee training? Getting buy-in is the idea that you need to get your employees on board with your company's vision and the trainings uh, your organization provides. It's being able to get them motivated to start and actually complete their trainings. Buy-in and motivation are crucial when it comes to successful employee training programs and without buy-in and motivation, uh, well, employees may view training as a chore uh, rather than an opportunity to grow. Leading all of this leads actually to poor learning outcomes and kind of limited application of new skills in the workplace. What's more, um, studies show that teams that are motivated and invested in their own professional development show an increase in productivity. 
as they perform better and increase job satisfaction and company loyalty. And this often leads to reduced employee turnover and an increase in profitability for the organization. Investing, like, I think investing in employee development demonstrates a commitment to employee well-being and can attract and retain top talent. So as we can see, the ability to motivate and engage your employees is essential. So what actually causes a lack of motivation? Um, getting buy-in and motivating employees to learn can be challenging, right? And even with the best intentions and efforts. And before we get into the ways to better engage employees in trainings, let's take a look at what can cause a lack of motivation for employees. And many of you, I'm sure, uh, have run into these issues in your own training programs. So here are some of, some of the most common uh, causes of employee disengagement when it comes to training. So the first one is that the content is boring, right? Then we have lack of job relevance, limited time, one size fits all trainings approach, and of course, resistance to change. And I think we all know um, what I mean with the first one on our list. And honestly, if your content is boring, not stimulating, your learners is going to lose interest immediately. Do, do you want to take boring trainings? I don't. <laughs> so yeah, and you probably um, do not as well. But don't worry, later in my presentation, I'm going to talk about how to make your trainings more engaging and not boring. <laughs> as for number two, uh, if training content isn't something that is relevant to the job of the employee, of course, the employee is going to be less interested in learning this content. For example, if an employee is being trained on a software application that they don't use in their day-to-day -day work, they may feel like the training is not really relevant to them. But the challenge is that even if the training is relevant and employees aren't explained why it's important, they will still perceive it's, it as a waste of time, you know? So one can cause, um, so one cause of lack of mot motivation, it's not understanding the relevance of trainings. Thirdly, um, limited time to complete trainings, and it is an issue. Employees are often busy with their day-to-day -day work, responsibilities and finding time for learning can be difficult. And if a training is too long or it can only be completed at inconvenient times, employees may opt to skip it, right? And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. As for number four, uh, one size fits all approach. Uh, this approach is often ignored by employees. People learn in different ways. Some employees may prefer uh, hands-on learning, while others may prefer reading or watching videos. And if the training doesn't cater uh, to different learning styles, some employees may struggle to engage with it. And the last one, resistance to change, <laughs> my favorite. It's something, yeah, I'm sure we are all guilty of at one time or another resistance to change and learning new skills or changing old habits can make some employees uncomfortable and they may resist the training or be hesitant to apply what they've learned in their work. So these are the causes. And my question to the audience, can you tell me how many of these barriers um, to motivation you have encountered? Perhaps there are other challenges that you have experienced that are not listed here. So let us know in our chat. All right, let's wait for the answers. And yes. uh, while we are waiting, Natalie, can I ask you a question? Mm, I think so. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you which of these barriers you have personally found the most challenging? For me, just recently, I experienced this uh, time limitations. Like, mm -hmm. When there is a short notice for a training, so I have to take an hour, a one hour training and I have only two days 
for that, it's a challenge for me because my schedule is booked for one or two weeks ahead. And yeah, it's really complicated for me. And we struggled with employee disengagement uh, in, at iSpring and have been trying to resolve those challenges as well. And it's a challenge to resolve these challenges. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm sure. Especially so, difficult it is when you work for an, a company that closely deals with education and yeah. it, it becomes so hard for you guys um, who are very knowledgeable about all those challenges to overcome them yourselves. Yeah. So definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's an issue. And, but once you start moving forward in this direction, you'll see the difference anyway. And I hope that the audience actually attended the session held by Tiana Ray. And so she talked about iSpring and yeah. how we set everything up. So I sure. think it can be really helpful yeah. just to see the real example. Great. So we have yeah. a couple of answers already and the rest I'm sure are on the way. So Michael mm -hmm. says that all of them are basically the ones that they have encountered. So another, uh, another answer comes from Shelby. Resistance to change is the biggest one for me, especially for employees that have been out uh, at our company for many, many, many years. Oh, yeah, that's a, yeah, definitely. OK, and also for resistance to change, Michael says, I try to um, rationale uh, it as is the change to must to fast or to soon. <laughs> mm. Interesting. OK. Sarah mentions that resistance to change and also lack of support for managers. Oh, that's a point. Yeah. yeah. Isaac says that repetitive content is quite boring in some cases. And then I say, I, th I see that there is this great agreement among the participants who are active in the chat and I welcome everybody else to not grunge their energy and share it back with us because this is the only way we can understand if you're enjoying the session or maybe we need to spice it up a little bit. Uh, please uh, let us know what you think. Uh, the one we agreed upon amongst the people who participate is that resistant to change is the biggest one. So we've got most of our comments related to resistance to change. Yeah, I see. And I have something for you. Just um, make sure to listen to the presentation till the very end. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you for let, uh, letting us know uh, about more barriers to motivation for employees. And this is quite a list, actually. And let's see if we can find a solution for most, if not all, um, of these issues. So let's learn how to make employees invest in training. All right. Um, engage in place. <laughs> so we've come to the most important part of my presentation, and I will go into uh, many ways that training professionals and companies in general can engage employees in the learning process. And in particular, I will focus on five techniques, uh, personalization, gamification, social learning, continuous learning, and reinforcement. Let me start with the first one, personalization. So uh, it's the idea that uh, trainings should be customized to match the unique needs preferences and learning styles of employees. This is a way to combat issues related to one size fits all approach. And with personalization, organizations can boost engagement and motivation, resulting in, well, improved learning outcomes. So how do you use to personalize your training? First, um, you'll need to conduct a needs assessment to understand the training needs of individual employees and identify any knowledge gaps or areas of weakness. And to conduct this uh, needs assessment, organizations can use a variety of methods, uh, including surveys, focus groups, and uh, of course, individual meetings. And iSpring has a template uh to assist you with this it's a quick reference guide for training needs assessment and analysis and my colleagues will share the link in the chat and also you can scan the qr code from your screens so feel free to do that just to start right away you know all right and then it's time to create learning 
paths or tracks for your employees. A learning track um, is a curated selection of courses given to a learner in order to master a particular subject. And learning tracks for your employees will be created based on the results of your needs assessment. And these tracks uh, include specific training modules, activities, and assessments designed to meet their individual learning needs and goals. And if you have questions about that, about learning tracks, uh, I recommend you to read um, a dedicated article in our blog where we will walk you through the entire process of developing a learning path or a track. So feel free to scan the QR code and uh, the link will be shared in the chat as well. So you have many ways you can leverage technology uh, to personalize learning tracks. And for example, in a in an LMS, a learning management system, you can create specific learning tracks um, for each job role or skill with recommended courses or activities. So um, LMS can be really handy in this case. Also, uh, with the LMS, um, with the help of LMS, uh, you can provide employees with access to a library of courses and learning content and allow them to choose their own learning track. That's also an option. And beyond that, uh, with iSpring's robust analytics, you can track the following success metrics closely, uh, such metrics like user engagement. You can check how often employees log into the LMS, how much time they spend using it, and who is most active. This is a good indicator of how much they are using the knowledge sharing resources. And if you are new to LMSs, don't worry, you can request a demo on our website and we'll walk you through all the features and benefits of iSpring Learn LMS. And by personalizing e-learning with iSpring Learn, you can improve employee engagement and learning outcomes, leading to better job performance and business results. So if you're interested, feel free to scan the QR code and I believe you will get the link in the chat as well. So, uh, diversify the types of media. When you are creating content for your learners, don't forget to diversify the types of media, right? Um, so uh, the types of media your learners can interact with. This is an important uh, component of personalization. And this can include offering different formats for training materials, such as videos, or um, interactive modules, as well as giving employees the option, you know, um, to learn at their own pace, right? So um, I have another question for the audience. As for personalization, do you personalize your training? I'm really curious about it. It's a challenge to personalize training, and I'm really curious if you do that. So just let us know in the chat yes or no would be enough. Right. And just a couple of words about personalization. Uh, personalizing the training process, um, it can require a significant investment of time and effort. But when training is tailored to individual employee needs, um, organizations can boost engagement, boost motivation, learning outcomes, and all of that just leads to a more you know, skilled and productive workforce and better business results. That's that's what we all are looking to achieve. Yeah. All right, and Natalie, I think we have already several answers, which is interesting because um, some people say no, it's not the case for them. But the others say absolutely yes for each department needs. Um, in some cases, depending on the content. And uh, Shelby, for example, says that they try to provide different options for different types of learners. Also, uh, Michael says that they personalize as much as possible and when possible. Um, so yeah, depending on the job code, they train in their own field. As an example, mm -hmm. Shelby would give handouts for learners who aren't super tech savvy. So yeah, I guess um, it's just Not very bad. different for everybody. Yeah, I expected to to see like no, no. 
Yeah, but the the, the answer is very dramatically from yeah. absolutely yes to absolutely no. Hmm? Yeah, that's true. Great. I'm glad to hear such uh, glad to see such answers actually. Mm -hmm. All right, then uh, let's move on and gamification. The next part. There are um, many game mechanics that can be used in the training process and. What you need to do is just to identify which ones are most relevant to your learning objectives. And once you are done with this, it's time to incorporate these elements into your training program. And to engage learner, you can create courses, for example, with branching scenarios. These are storyline twists and endings that depend on learners' choices. They can be implemented to demonstrate possible outcomes of situations. And uh, for example, the iron and steel company and LMK created a compliance course uh, for their employees in Ice Spring Suite, and they used branch scenarios to demonstrate the consequences of our unsafe approach to gas treatment. If a trainee chooses the wrong way to react, they proceed to the slide that explains the negative outcomes of the choice. Awesome, right? And to turn your um, your course into an entertaining narrative, you can create dialogue simulations. They are role plays in which learners choose how to reply to a virtual person in the same way they deal with a dissatisfied customer, for example, or a potential client in real life. And dialogue simulations, they help one to practice and improve soft skills, communication skills, and we had uh, dedicated sessions on this topic at our previous iSpring Days conference, the last year conference, and you can click on this link to access it, and I'm sure you have it in the chat already. So feel free to watch the videos uh, for iSpring Days 2022. All right. And um, yeah, another way to gamify learning with iSpring is to create interactive quizzes. quizzes. Uh, in iSpring Suite, we have 14 question types, um, allow multiple attempts to give employees multiple lives and training, for feedback loops, award points for correct answers, or a set penalties to deduct points for incorrect quiz answers. You can also make quizzes uh, with objects and transform your course into a mystery uh, with missed items, for example. And uh, on the slide uh, on your screens, you can see just one more example of how you can make compliance training more engaging. This is fire safety course prompts. Um, this is a fire safety course, and it prompts us to find the proper object and drag it to the system block to put out the fire. I think it's awesome. I like it. I like it too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for one more thing about gamification, um, you know, it's not necessary to remake your existing learning materials, and you don't have to, um, you know, alter them to be game-like. You can do so for a training process itself. The solution is to add the system of points, badges, and leaderboards, the PBL triad. It's easy to do this in a learning management system. Um, so an LMS, actually, it's an online platform where you can store e-learning content, enroll employees in courses, and assess their progress. And many LMSs support gamification and allow the use of game mechanics for assessment. So let's see how you can leverage the PBL triad using iSpring Learn LMS, just like an example. For example, points. Um, learners can earn points and complete with each other, compete with each other, I'm sorry. Um, so just award them points when they take courses and complete tasks or, I don't know, assignments or simulations. Um, then we have badges. Every time learners complete course materials, they can get badges. For instance, um, some of our clients do that you can award them with a new badge for every 100 points or grant them, let's say, a best negotiator title as soon as, as they complete a contract management course, for example. Then we have uh, leaderboards. 
Uh, leaderboards actually they motivate learners to get better results and they help monitor their progress. Uh, progress bars. Um, a progress bar shows how far a player has progressed toward accomplishing their mission. And of course, um, as with any training, just be sure to reevaluate the effectiveness of your gamification strategy over time and make further adjustments as required. This ongoing process will help ensure that your strategy continues to meet its goals and improve the learning outcomes for your employees. So that was about gamification. Um, the next part we have is social learning. One of my favorite ones, by the way, it's like the next way uh, to encourage your teams to actively participate in trainings like by incorporating social learning techniques. So social learning history uh, theory introduced by psychologist Albert uh, Bandura proposed that learning occurs through observation, imitation and modeling and is influenced by factors such as attention, motivation, attitudes and emotions. And this theory suggests that learning, um, it occurs, you know, like because people observe the consequences of others, uh, other people's behaviors. And according to Bandura, people observe behavior either directly through social interactions with others or indirectly by observing behaviors through media. And actions that are rewarded are more likely to be imitated while those that are punished um, are avoided, of course. And this can be done uh, through collaborative activities, the use of social media, group projects or team challenges or mentorship programs. And first of all, you can use technology to facilitate social learning. Use learning management systems that incorporate social learning features, such as discussion forums, um, chat rooms, and video conferencing to facilitate social learning. Right. And one more question for my dear audience. Um, just really curious to know your opinion. Uh, we are all different and have different approaches. So do you like the idea of making social learning just part of your training process? I know there can be different opinions, so just please reply in the chat yes or no, and I will repeat my question. Do you like the idea of making social learning part of your training process? Just right. yes or no. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, it will be also great to know why yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see what kind of answers we get. So far, those are yeses. Um, let me see if we can um, just take... 10 more seconds to receive more answers to be um, better equipped with statistics. I start getting yes with many exclamation marks, which I assume means that indeed um, our audience believes this is a way to go. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very, very lovely to hear why. Um, Roxando says that she's not, sh um, they're not sure, wondering with their group if it's appropriate. And Cliff uh, mentions that employees can learn from each other, and that's why it's definitely a yes. Right. Lauren also mentions, we are all learning from each other. People learn better from peers as they aren't as intimidated. And yes, because the factors you have already highlighted, says Isaac. Awesome. Yeah. Good to know that, actually. Um, as for iSpring Learn, uh, thank you for your answers. Just want to mention um, the, the social learning that we have in iSpring Learn. Uh, we released a newsfeed feature. And um, the newsfeed feature, there you can see published and unpublished news posts and banners. And now readers can react to your post with emojis. And this feedback function will help you involve employees in the company's processes and, of course, enhance corporate culture. And the same way you can encourage uh, the use of social media, by the way, uh, platforms such as LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook can be used to facilitate social learning. 
create groups where communities where employees can discuss and share their knowledge and experiences. So just don't forget to recognize and reward employees who participate in social learning activities. This will encourage others to participate and create a culture of continuous learning for sure. And um, yeah, now we are moving on to reinforcement. Finally, um, reinforcing learning through regular feedback and follow-up can help employees to stay engaged and motivated. There are a number of ways you can incorporate positive reinforcement into your e-learning course design, I mean, and I have a few tips for you. You, uh, you can use them to encourage positive learning behaviors for sure. And the first one is uh, regular feedback. Regular, regular feedback is a crucial component of an effective e-learning program. Quizzes and assessments can help learners track their progress and identify areas that require additional attention. Performance evaluations can provide insight into how well learners are applying their newfound knowledge, um, I mean, the knowledge to their work. Additionally, um, ongoing coaching and mentoring can offer employees the support they need to continue their learning journey and encourage them to apply uh, new skills in real world scenarios. Another effective way uh, to reinforce um, learning is to schedule uh, regular follow-up sessions, such as weekly or monthly uh, meetings or webinars. And during these sessions, learners can review what they've learned, discuss any challenges or questions, and of course, receive feedback and guidance from trainers or peers. And then we have, um, the next point is just offer custom tailored praise. Um, offer a custom tailored praise to employees who exhibit particularly positive learning behaviors. Just avoid offering general praise to all members of your audience. And while it's perfectly fine to give them all a virtual pat on the back when they work well together or all learn, earn high scores on the exam, it's more effective to praise each learner individually and personalize the praise. So again, personalization, right? Um, the next one is, um, Design e-learning activities that focus on progress and improvement. Your learners should always be aware of the fact that you are not asking for perfection, just for them to do their very best during the e-learning course. This is why it's so essential to focus on improvements and the progress they have made while you are presenting, presenting the positive reinforcement, you know. Um, the next recommendation, let's say, do not offer rewards on a regular basis. You can have too much of a good thing, especially it comes to rewards, and it's best to surprise your learners with rewards rather than offering them so often uh, that they grow to expect them. And finally, mm, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, finally, leaderboards. Um, it's important and crucial, I, th I would say, to recognize top learners. Um, you can do that by integrating leaderboards or uh, other reward systems. Human beings are competitive by nature. <laughs> and even those of us who do not necessarily think of ourselves as very competitive are motivated when we excel in a particular subject. And this is where leaderboards and reward systems come into play, right? So to sum up, um, we have discussed why it's so important to motivate your learners to invest in their own training. And we've gone over a list of barriers to gaining employees buy-in when it comes to training. And now, hopefully, you have some techniques in your bag of tricks uh, that you will use to combat these barriers. By incorporating personalization, gamification, social learning, um, reinforcement into your trainings, hopefully you will see many more employees completing their trainings and improving skills and increasing productivity. Right? And 
yeah, I guess the final part of my presentation, I hope I still have some time. Um, Only about one minute. All right. <laughs> I will try to be brief. Just uh, best practices for creating a positive learning culture. That's the last thing I'd like to discuss today. Um, it's an essential part of turning your employees into engaged and active learners. Just create a positive learning culture. And I have a list uh, here of some best practices to help um, create a positive learning culture. Yeah. So you can see the list. Lead by example. Company leaders should prioritize learning and development. Encourage collaboration. Encourage collaboration and teamwork in the learning process. Please provide resources. Provide your employees with the resources they need to succeed in their learning journey. Offer incentives uh, for learning and development, such as bonuses, promotions, and recognition. It's very important to celebrate successes of employees who have completed a course or achieved a certification. This helps build a positive learning culture and really encourages others to follow suit. And finally, emphasize the relevance. Um, show them how the knowledge and skills gained through learning can help them perform better on the job and advance in their careers. Right. Um, I wanted to give you just a couple of examples uh, about the Google um, company and LinkedIn, but I'm not sure I have time for that, so I can just click through. Um, yeah. So just for example, uh, very, um, very good uh, corporate learning and co corporate culture of Google and LinkedIn, they just show how it can affect the turnover rates. So for example, in Google, it's just 5.8%. Um, it's a very low turnover rate. In LinkedIn, uh, it's 8%, also very low turnover rate. So yeah, they just, um, they offer a wide range of learning opportunities. And this is how it affects um, the turnover, for example, the increased productivity and so on. So um, we've discussed the importance of buy-in uh, and motivation for successful learning outcomes, including the impact on employee engagement, retention, and productivity. And we highlighted common challenges and to engage in place in the learning process, we discussed various techniques such as personalization, gamification, social learning, reinforcement. And we also talked briefly about the best practices for creating a um, positive learning culture. And if you want to know more about employee resistance to training, our team at iSpring, we conducted a big research study on this very topic. Just follow the link, you will have it in the chat, or scan the QR code on the screen to download the research study report. And this report gives um, an in-depth look at how other companies struggle with the issue of employee resistance to training. And I think right now we are ready for the Q&A session. Right. Natalie, thank you so very much. I think it was really exciting. And I, I see lots of comments in the chat about how important the buy-in is. And generally, um, our attendees were discussing uh, some of their personal situations and the situations in their organization. So I'm very glad we had this opportunity to learn from you and iSpring team. And I'm also sure that this is a great, fantastic uh, research result that will be very helpful for our attendees. So thanks for sharing this as well. I was also advised that uh, you might have a webinar coming soon sharing this topic specifically. So please stay tuned, stay with iSpring and learn more about this specific topic in the upcoming uh, webinars. But very unfortunately, I would have to probably skip the Q&A because of time constraints so that we wouldn't uh, ruin the schedule for the rest of the day, which is a pretty long day. But because um, your colleagues have shared LinkedIn, uh, your LinkedIn in the chat, I'm sure there are lots of requests that already you will find in your uh, LinkedIn page. And I'm sure the colleagues will be able to ask you questions then later in person in LinkedIn chat. Sounds great. 
Thank you. Um, I'm Thank not you. really happy about skipping the Q&A session, but still. Yeah. I know, yeah. I'm so sorry about this, but let's hope for the best. See you next Ice Spring uh, Days 2024, and we'll have more time to discuss this or the other topic, okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, just a couple of words to the audience. Uh, thank you all for attending this session. And I hope that you will be able to take some insights and strategies discussed uh, in this presentation and apply them in your own companies. So thank you once again for joining me today. I wish you all the best in your learning and development efforts. And thank you, Chris. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, same on my side. Thank you, Natalie. Please stay with us for the rest of the sessions.